The show must go on, and it does. Here we are, PBA 50, Spectrum Lanes Open, Step Ladder Final. What a crazy last couple of hours. Uh, things work, things don't work. This player's in, this player's out. <laughs> number one seed, number four seed, a little bit of everything here. But, and we have a rematch when it's all said and done here in the opening match of our step ladder. Chris Barnes and Mike Calvin as they bowled each other in the round of eight. Calvin snuck out the win, and here they are again in the opening match. Yeah, that uh, if obviously if Barnes, he was a tournament leader, if he had won, he would have been seated number one. But since Calvin beat him, and Calvin was seated number 24, Barnes goes to five. And Mike Calvin goes to number four. Yeah, so Barnes get, or excuse me, Calvin gets lane choice. I'm already getting confused. <laughs> but we've got another great step out here. Who else? We got Craig Elliott, Tom Carter here, and also Brian Kane on the call tonight. Well, the after show. that but match, what, what else we got? We, I, I would think someday we have a future Hall of Famer looking for his first PBA title, Ryan Schaefer. And then that match is people that we've seen before this whole swing. Parker Bone the third in the number two position. Never, never heard him. Never heard of him. <laughs> At the bone zone, and then the winner of that goes on to meet our tournament leader, James Campbell, looking for his very first title. And I got to believe for Campbell, the nerves, the nerves got to be setting in a little bit. I mean, he's been, he throws the ball really, really good. He's had some chances. He had a chance, I think, at the U.S. Open main match play. Didn't quite get to the show, but here he is going to bowl for his first title tonight. But we've got a few matches before we get there. We've got Chris Barnes, Mike Calvin, and well, Kelvin, a local guy, he's got a lot of people rooting for him here. Well, it was kind of funny. Uh, James had to bowl Lenny Borsch, and James was the number two seed, but since Barnes left this way, we had such a tough time figuring it out. We Barnes did. lost. He goes to fifth. Campbell was the number two seed, so since he won, he goes in as tournament leader. And, and Kelvin, in his road to get here, he beat. He, had, he beat he, well, Couch. That's he beat Yeah, we had to throw a double to make match play, and he beats Couch. He beats Couch. Then he goes on to beat Walter Ray Williams, and then he beat Chris Barnes to get to Hall here. Hall of Famer. Hall of, Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. So <laughs> he's already got several feathers in his hat he's got just I mean, to get on, to He's this. on house money at this point. I mean, beating, I mean, look, he's a great bowler. We know that. He's from the Detroit area. <clears throat> you know, bowls all over the state of Michigan. But to beat throw those three guys – uh, look, I, I'd be happy. Well, obviously, he's not scared. No matter who laces him up, he can throw the ball. He's won five uh, what they call SSOs, Michigan titles. Yeah, so, super, senior, super Senior Opens, which right. you bowl against the seniors in Michigan, you're bowling against pretty good competition. Guys that have won on the 50 Tour in the past bowl those tournaments. So. Yeah, and he's not one of the guys that's out here a lot because he, he's still working. He works as a millwright at Chrysler. Okay. So it's not like he has all the time in the world to come out, but obviously when he does come out, he's a force to be reckoned with. And here's our first look at Matt Calvin in his first step ladder final against Chris Barnes. He's got such a simple game, just down and in. He doesn't do anything fancy where you, you're going to see Chris cross quite a few boards. You're going to see Campbell cross quite a few boards. But Mike is pretty much down and in. The only thing I worry about this match in the warm-up, a lot of guys are really trying to burn up that hook spot. And since he's a down and in guy, he could be a, a little bit of a, a shake to him because that ball could be burning up and losing energy. Yeah, could be. <clears throat> but a uh, very experienced player. Let's see how he adjusts. Uh, to this, we saw a couple good looks there, a little close up on the lanes, and how there's there's not the normal number of boards out there. We'll see that shot a couple more times. Well, it, there's 39 boards on the lane, but you don't know it here. <laughs> not here, there's not. There's like <laughs> seven. Um, pretty cool venue, and not the first time this year that we've actually qualified. Well, we're in the same center, but remember in Virginia, we went to a completely different part of the state half hour south to Bill Moore's house. Here we just moved into the boutique area. Yeah. But different lane surface. I mean, same surface, but 20 years newer. 20 but years newer. Uh, a little bit harder. A little bit more texture. A little bit harder. I mean, the guys are kind of up in the air on what it really is. The approaches are textured. Uh, but with all the humidity, we've had a problem with approaches anyway. It doesn't make any difference textured or not. It's uh, That's been a, a struggle on its own. you got to beat the lanes and the approaches. It's just all part of the game. Great over the shoulder. Take a look at this. We can see exactly where Chris Barnes is laying the ball down, where he's hitting at the arrows. 
Let's see if he gets it out to maybe a couple inches right of that range finder. That was like right over 15 out to eight. Yeah. But he spent his practice time throwing a snowball pretty much in that same area. But he's got so much speed, he can actually, and reverie, he can kind of overpower a shot a little bit, I well, think. And use that to his advantage, <clears throat> right? You see, well, drive him up a little bit, well, that's, he can juice it up a little bit, and do something the other players can't. Well, that's, that's the idea. And, and look, I mean, Chris is one of the best out there at helping set the lanes up good for himself. He's done it for decades. Right. So. You know, he's got three balls on the rack, and obviously it looks like he's throwing the reality, but he's got a gym up there and an infinite physics. But this one probably has the least amount of service of any of the balls he's got on the rack. I'd just keep doing that right there. That looked pretty darn good. Another replay here. Take a look at this shot. This is pure. Firm off the hand. A little bit right of target on that one, but still down to eight. Down to eight. Down to eight. Well, what we assume eight is. <laughs> I mean, down there. Eight-ish. Eight-ish. Yeah. It was right of the rangefinder. Mike was telling me that he was the 91 Collegian champion, too, here in the state. I mean, really? He's just, you know, he's, he's in three, he said he's in three different Hall of Fames, too. So, obviously, he's been around a while. Oh, I've heard his name for a long time across the state. He can play. No doubt about it. And we saw earlier his shots right around 15 miles an hour were ideal. That one was 15.5, a little quicker than usual. Leaves a 10 pin. We did oil since round of eight. They are back on the same pairs, but it's going to be a little bit different. And, and you know, half mile quicker. Of course, you got to be a little pumped up here. It's a step ladder. Well, we didn't know if uh, Mike was even going to make the show in, in the previous round against Barnes. He missed a two pin. He flagged that two pin. It was like, oh no. Yeah, we thought it was over. We, yeah, and then Chris came back with back to back on the left lane, two tens to allow Mike to get the win. Let's see where Calvin's laying it down. Remember, Barnes was, what, about 13 to 8-ish, somewhere yeah, in there? 13, 15 to 8. He's more like 12. 11 to, to 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's He's like pretty straight. 10, 10, 11 to 10, yeah. yeah. If he moves left, though, very far, he's going to be in that set down area where Chris tried to burn him up, and that could be a factor. So hopefully he can keep the speed up to play that zone that he's in. So this is our opening match, and you haven't picked a winner yet over the top five. I get to go first? <clears throat> you get to go first. Oh, I, I don't know how I could pick against Parker. I mean, I'd like to see Ryan win, of course. It'd be great to see Calvin win, Campbell to get his first win. I mean, you know, Barnes another win. But if I if I'm if I'm wagering uh, uh, cold ice water, I got to go Parker. He's got three wins already, uh, and he's got and, a pretty. And if I don't pick him, you're going to pick him. <laughs> That's you're exactly <laughs> right, uh, and he's got a really good look. So, well, Campbell's only got to win one match, so I got to go with James. All right, Ryan. How about you? Who do you like? Ryan. There we go. <laughs> Ryan Schaefer. Okay. And if Calvin oh, gets. Oh, that didn't quite make it up the hill there. If Calvin gets through this, that means he beats actually four Hall of Famers to keep on right. going. <laughs> the same one twice. And I, you know, I, I wonder if, if Chris has bowled against Mike Calvin in the past. Because, um, you know, Chris does come up here and bowl once in a while. You know, he bowls, you know, his his. ABC, USBC team was kind of based on Detroit for a lot of years. He spends a lot of time up here with Steve Jacobs. They're good friends. So I wouldn't be surprised if they've, they've maybe met a time or two. Uh, some other place, some other time. Oh, I'm sure that they have. I mean, with Mike's stats, that, and he only bowls part-time, but I, it seems like he bowls some of the bigger tournaments. I, I know out to, at Samstown, I think in one of the sweepers, I think he won. He shot back to back 300. So the guy can play. There's just no doubt about it. He's throwing a hypercell. And so he's throwing an older version of a ball with 2,000 on it, where some of the guys out there snowballs only with like 240 and 360 grit. 
He's probably got a lot of games on it. That's inside a target all the way. All the way. As you said, he kind of hit Chris and laid down the ball hooked instantly. Yeah, he, he, if he even gets close to that spot where Chris is at, the ball's going to hook. So he, he's – and he, I know Mike can hook it. I've seen him bowl before, but he, he might have to jump inside a little bit. Uh, and I, he doesn't have another ball down there, so I don't know what his go-to ball is if he decides to get out of this, but he's only got five frames left. Yeah, you could kind of see that coming. The ball just do you see that ball dying? Right. Yeah, yeah, because he right. he moved well, way into where they broke down the lanes, and that ball just quit on him down lane. And that's the thing that happens in in today's game, especially in the practice rounds. Uh, these guys got roughly 15 minutes, all five guys at different times, and they're trying to break down a shot. And if you get into that spot where that ball had been setting down, the ball just, just it just gets the energy sucked right out of it. All right, that ball held Much off. better yeah, shot. Maybe just a touch inside, but that ball laid off a little yeah. bit in front of the pocket. So. But that is I – mean, he's going pretty straight at it. He just crossed 12 there and took it to 10. So he's got like a two-board belly. Yeah, Chris Drake's here is going to find himself down 41 through five frames. See the score right there. Well, we got three players, touring players, between Barnes, Schaefer, and, and Parker Bone that have been in these positions before, and they, they, they try to break the lane, lane down to their specific satisfaction so that they can run over the competition. But sometimes you can break it down, and it ends up biting you in the butt. Yeah, you never know. And that shot there for Barnes, he just, he just missed right. I mean, that ball was at four or five. That's... Three, four boards, three, four inches right of where he's been. Yeah, playing he threw that seventeen four. So, I mean, his speed has been right there. You know, he's been pushing eighteen, but he just he just missed that one right. And we've seen him, I guess, in here in this bay, his misses are, are two tens, two four tens, two four eight tens. His it, misses have been big splits. Well, he gets it too far right down lane, and we do know that there isn't out of bounds if you get out of that box down line down lane, which is roughly, what, nine to six, somewhere in that box? If you get out to four, could be three off the right. We need a telestrator so we can actually draw the box on that lane and see who actually That would be nice. It would right? be like right there. Hit that box right there. <clears throat> you know, that would be something cool to do for one of the shows before the show ever comes on. We could, can we go out there and film that so we have it to reference to? Uh, I don't know, maybe. We're on the 42-foot Mark Roth pattern, just under 22 mils. It looked like fairly symmetric right to left. I think a little more on the track on the right side, looking at that uh, the sheet that our lane man Eric Pearson provided us. Well, technically, there should probably be a little bit more on the right. We always have more right-handers sure. than left-handers. Yeah, it makes sense. So remember, he's, his, his shot is, is like 12 to 10. That's, that's 9 to 8. That was right all the way. And that ball just did not turn the corner. And I know for a fact one of the players threw snowballs like right up 7, 8. So he could, Mike is right in that, I, to me, he's in that danger zone. I, I would think he'd get out of there. So I was surprised but, to realize that Ryan Schaefer has not won on a 52 yet. Well, you know, and he's made several shows. And when you asked me who, on, who was on the show, and I said that he's looking for his first title, I didn't know until John Weber made the announcement. I could have swore that Ryan had won at least before out here, but John Weber in the opening announcement said that Ryan looking for his first title, and I was like, "Are you sure about that?" No, I, yeah, it was, but it's, it was just a surprise to all of us. Kind of like his, his regular tour career, a lot of second places, unfortunately. But maybe this is the week. The only 300 of the tournament. Yeah, and it was almost 300 to 290. Bowling Larry Verbal. Oh, that was a good match. 
How straight is that arm swing and follow through? That was, I, that was that was that was. How shot. simple yeah. is his game? I, I'm jealous. I would love to have that game right there. Yeah, That's forever. Effortless. You're never going to get hurt throwing a ball like that. Crossing, still 14 out to like 8-9. Yeah, he was giving that one to Dester. So you better stay right there and strike. Look at this. Uh, looking at it all the way down the lane. Like, yep. He knew that one off his hand. So step ladder final, just one game. No three game totals here. This is it. 218 max score for Mike Calvin. 254. For Chris Barnes. He's hammering on that ball. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to take the pattern out of play just a little bit. Well, when you got that kind of speed that you can. Give me a hitter, Ricky. Well, Mike Calvin isn't, doesn't even have a choice. He is in a much, 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 much strike situation right now in the ninth and tenth. Well, even nine out, Barnes is in a 220s max of 218, yeah. right? So there's not yeah. much he can do. And yeah. game, set, yeah. match. But this is going to be a learning curve for Mike Calvin. I mean, he's a good player. I, I have no doubts that he'll make another show if he gets to come out more often. He, but I think he needs to take into consideration the way these guys come over here and kind of break the lane down so it gives him a little bit better look. I think he's got some new fans. I know I'm, I'm a Mike Calvin fan now after what we saw today. I mean, what a great well, performance. You I beat mean, three just, Hall of Famers to get just here. Just the run he made, just throwing two to get here to begin with, even to make match play. And then, and yeah, then just going through Hall of Famer after Hall of Famer. And next up, Ryan Schaefer. Yeah. Take on Chris Barnes. I'm pretty sure they've met a few times on TV. A little bit, a little bit. Mike Calvin just going through the motions right now. Best he can do is 198. But what a great tournament he had. And he'll be around more. Well, hopefully we get to see him in Jackson, another, another uh, tournament here in, in his home state. Well, he's 58 years old, so thank God he can't sneak in on the Super Seniors. <laughs> Yet. Because <laughs> he'd be a force to be reckoned with in the Super Senior tournaments in Jackson and down at Columbus. Amazing how quiet the crowd is in here. Yeah, it is, and this place is. This little boutique is crowded. It's pretty full. It is. That one's so, outside of Target. Some people bad. got looks like pizzas and beers and sandwiches. And yeah, I can smell every bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Took a, Chris Barnes, a couple practice shots. Now, what do you think we're going to see him try here? He's got. I would a couple think freebies. I would think he would try something probably a little bit more responsive on the back, since they've kind of. Right up the front part and middle part of the lane. So hybrid pearl. He's got, he's always still got the reality in his hand. He moved in a little bit. All right. <laughs> I'm surprised he doesn't. A little rise. And it might be too responsive off the back, too angular. But like uh, a Zen or, or something, something symmetrical that's going to get down there a little cleaner. But he's a Hall of Famer for a reason. He, he yes. makes good ball choices. Yes. You're not gonna, uh, it's not going to get tricked or shut out on lanes too very often. So 230-something for Chris Barnes. Oh, the field ball strike, 97.2% yep. time, oh. so we can give him 230. Here we go. Ball change. Going to try something. So, 
Is this the infinite physics, I think? I saw some dark purple. Dark bluish purple. Oh, that ball went changed directions pretty strong yeah, on the back end. I don't think I like that one. I don't think he does either. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's going to yeah. use that unless he moves a lot farther left. So Ryan Schaefer comes in. He'll get a couple of practice shots. What's he get? Three in each lane? Is that what it is? Uh, yes. Or a, yeah, total number, a total number of shots. It didn't have to be in each lane, right? Yeah, and my counterpart in crime, Jeff Johnson, is on his way to Les Zyke's place for a one-day regional. Okay. And so I'm going to go out and check on Ryan, and right. I will be back. All right, sounds good. Tom Carter doing double duty. We got him here in the booth on the call. He's also still the ball rep for the brands at Brunswick. So he's going to go on there and try to get Mr. Schaefer lined up properly. So I guess that means you're all just stuck with me for a little bit. What do you like in this next match? Ryan Schaefer or Chris Barnes? Chris Barnes looking for his second title on the season. Schaefer looking for his first ever PBA 50 title. It's a pretty good wide shot there, the boutique. Oh, we got a dozen lanes in here. Nice massive backdrop there. You see they'll put uh, sporting games on in there. Big old TVs where you see the logos. Schaefer was hooking a little more than Barnes most of the week. He's going to jump inside there and a little slower. A little type of uh, different roll. During the break here, we'll do a little giveaway. Why not? Make sure everybody sneaks in there. Make sure you minimize your screen so you can see the little blue box pop up. Click it and do the giveaway. That's a simple answer, Chris. Uh, it's Tom and I's job to do the step ladder final. And we've got Brian running the computer. And, and uh, there's only so much we can all do here. We're, we're a small crew. And uh, we do the best we can. Twenty five seconds for that giveaway. There we go. Submit your entry right now. It should be up on your screen. A little blue box says submit entry. Everybody gets bonus points even if you don't win. Couple seconds, we'll have our winner. A few more shots for Ryan Schaefer. He's a higher seed. He'll get lane choice. Charlie Tapp, the Tapster. Little Barnes and Noble gift card. Congrats. You cash, Charlie. get a lot of good insight now from Tom Carter to see what their conversation is and he can Ch 
can give us uh, maybe some inside information on how they want to play the play the lanes here. Charlie, I bet you can get uh, you can get pie at Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Bring it to Jackson, and Mr. Flanagan will uh, use that. To I did talk to Ryan Schaefer on the jersey. He's always got some unique ones. This one is actually a tribute to his teammates back home. Uh, the goat on front is a you know guy they call a the goat back home, and, and the one on the back is a guy in his team that. And those are his teammates' own words. I throw it like a pig. So that's uh, what Ryan put on the back of the shirt. That's for his teammates back in back in New York. Ryan with a pretty unique sense of humor, and I know a lot of us enjoy it. And you uh, can't ever argue his brutal honesty, and ain't nothing wrong with that either. Looks like this should be the last shot here. PBA 50 Spectrum Lanes open. Step ladder final, match number two. We just saw Chris Barnes get past Mike Calvin in match number one. The voice of our Tournament director John Weber announcing this match. And we got Tom Carter back in the booth. Uh, what's the game plan there, Tom? You and Ryan had a, some pretty good conversation there. Well, the right lane is the trick, and that's what screwed up Mike Calvin. And Ryan was saying it's kind of like 51 52 in the in the matches before the right lane hooks more and earlier so I think he might be throwing two different balls and stealth on the left lane and the new melee carbon on the right lane so big difference in, in equipment too the stealth is a, is a pretty big ball right yeah the, and both symmetrical balls but it, you know it's a big solid then we got a, a, a pearl on the other side Mike said I just got tripped up on that right lane he goes they burn up that spot and I said yeah Great show, but I think you needed to move left and get out of that that yeah. zone that you were in. But learn, I mean, it's a learning curve, right? I mean, right. learn from it. It's a, I mean, you know, you've got nerves running, your adrenaline's probably running high. He was thrown at a half mile an hour faster most of that game than we saw the game before, the match before. So every time you're on lanes, you've got to learn something from what's happening. This guy's learned a lot through the years. Yeah. And it's going to reset. Yeah. It's, well, nobody was walking, so I don't no, know. No, no, I think he's just got kind of that uh, little – Stop mechanism in his approach, and he got that first step, and something didn't feel right. So, start over. If it don't feel good, don't throw it. And there's eight shots of practice. Yep, I counted. Yeah, six ish. All right, giving that ball a little more yeah. room. So Chris did not get any practice on this pair. So you know he was just to the left, staying loose. But watching what Ryan was doing, looks like he's bumped in a little bit. Well, I think, you know, he knows he opened up the lane. So he's got to move left, throw it to that track area where that hook spot down lane. Now this is going to be the telltale sign for Ryan. He only threw this ball twice on the right lane. But it struck both times. And that one he got in a little bit, but it held pocket. We just needed to get something that was cleaner down the lane. Sure. Something not going to peel off the spot quite so hard? Is that the Well, idea and here? something to get through the mid lane, yeah, too, okay. of what they burn up. He just got that left, and he it yeah. almost actually stayed there. I mean, not quite, but it, it, for yeah. missing that much, that could have been a lot worse. Yeah, he, he knew that was left. He, he kind of yelled as soon as he let go of it. 
He's looking down at the approach. I know you can't be counting boards. <laughs> you just got to figure out where you're going to be standing. Not the easiest spare I'd want to be shooting at either. 3-6. He never got that ball right off his hand at all. And hope you don't want to miss right now on the spare because there is OB out there. Well, no he did throw one ball in practice on the right lane. He swung it farther, and it was literally like three off the right. He hit the OB. I mean, you think there's so much friction out there because you see how much the balls are hooking, but you get it outside of five, and it's not coming back, not unless you got the hand of God. That was like 17. Yeah, he's, he's, he's creating, opening up a little bit. Yeah, he's creating a steeper angle there. He, he went like 17, 18 out to, well, uh, what? 7, 8. Yeah, yeah, 7, 8. Yeah. A little farther right. A little 10 board belly there. And for so many people that bowl, those angles just look so wrong because they're so steep. But that seems to be kind of the, the story this year on the, on the senior tour. A lot of the shows we've had, the angles are pretty steep. He gave that one even a little more room. <coughs> wow. I think he likes where he's at right now. Just bumped in. I mean, it looked like another, another board inside and gave it room down lane. And look, look, this came back nice. Yeah, that's, that's at least a board farther right than what he had on the right. Yeah, his set down least. point looks like it's – on the, at the foul line around 25, which makes sense if he's crossing about 18. Yeah, a lot fewer boards on the lanes here. You can actually see them all. What you see is what you get there. There's just a lot of big boards there. Pretty unique looking lane surface. All right, so they're kind of well, both on the same yeah. break point, just yeah, different just, angles. Yeah, just there. different ways to get there. And, and that's a lot about bowling anyway. Uh, if you're not striking, we call it a free look. You can walk down and watch somebody else that is striking and see where their break point is and how they're getting there. And then you got to figure out in your game how you're going to do the same thing. So what happened to the rule of 31, which 42-foot pattern, they should be at 11, and they're out to 6. Well, out here we, we kind of figure 80% of that. Okay. I know that's the rule, 31, but it uh, always seems I mean, to be a little a, bit far. Yeah, I mean, that's a guideline. Yeah. But, uh, you know, normally we wouldn't see players a full arrow right of that. That was a way better working. shot out of uh, Ryan. He got that right. Well, you know, when I think some people misconstrued the rule of 31, thinking, okay, it's it's 42 feet, rule of 31 is 11, means I had to play 11 at the arrows. It doesn't mean that. No, at well, the end of the pattern. We're right. at the end of the yeah. pattern. It's it's about the break point, not at the, the front part of the pattern. That can get you really screwed up. <laughs> That's why I don't even have a target. Oh. Oh. Wow. How is that possible? That looked just like the shot on the previous lane around 17. Yeah, look. Uh, out identical. to eight. Well, look at this ball. It just, why? It, it did, hit the it one. Deflect. It deflect. No, it hit the one, three, and wow. hit the five and went straight back. It never continued. And you think with all those revs, how does this ball not continue? That, that was brutal. And the way bowling score goes, they've uh, both had the same amount of strikes and spares, but Chris will be one pin behind if they both strike out. Well, the caliber bowlers we have right now uh, winding up this show, anything's possible. They could strike from now until tomorrow. Well, Chris started out, I think, 214, 280, 290 this morning in the advancers round. We <laughs> saw Schaefer put up, what, 750 or whatever with a 300 game. Uh, he had 781 with a 300. Yeah. So yeah. Larry Verbal bowled his brains out to lose by 60 at <laughs> 725. No doubt they can both strike at will. Uh, but a little different circumstances here in the boutique, in the stepladder. Chance to bowl for a title. Oh, 
See, that ball almost quit again, and he bucketed out the eight. Doesn't make sense, does it? No. Now that you look at this shot here. And you see that ball hit the 1-3, and it went right. Yeah, he's thinking, why, so, does, why does that one carry and the other one doesn't? Well, so what was that saying we always use? The ball tells you what the lanes are doing, and the pins tell you what the ball's doing? <laughs> or I'd rather be lucky than good. <laughs> <laughs> or I'd rather be lucky and good, exactly. Oh, Schaefer left, didn't like that one. Left. That ball's got a hold. I think he stuck a little bit and just yeah. kind of, yeah. Not a good shot. But again, makeable spare. Throw it 3 6 10. Yeah, that, if he'd have struck there, that would have definitely tightened up the match quite a bit. Another seemingly, seemingly easy spare. But so many ways to miss it. Lacer's on nine pin with it. Ideal, you just want to get all three with the ball. Tom, is that the plan here? Well, that's the idea. But Brian's going to hook at it, and that always kind of scares me a little bit. All right. Yeah, he, okay, he go. <laughs> I just sweating over there. Yeah, I, I, I was because when you, know, you hook at it, I mean, especially with it getting out of bounds, if he hits that, he just takes the six ten off. If he cuts it a little short. The three hits a six and goes around the ten. And a lot of guys throw spare balls at it, and that spare ball just fades backwards and hits all three pins. And ideally, hopefully, if the ball hits all three pins, they go down. Well, I sure hope so. All right, so Barnes gets a, a little lead back halfway through our second game of the step ladder here. Inside again. And it carried. Oh, my. Well, Barnes has got 99 in the fourth with the strike up. And Ryan has 87 in the fourth, and he went spare strike 107 in the fifth. That was a good three, four boards. Three boards inside the range finder there of the last shot for Schaefer. But yeah, he, he trips one out. Take advantage of those breaks. Well, it's a good thing that ball stopped. Yes. Maybe the, the burn-up lane might have helped that ball not hook quite as much, and that looked like that ball was a mile oh, right he got a off of his hand. One, yeah. He got a mitt full. Do we have that replay? Look at, look at his hand on this one. He gets all of this shot. Nice slow-mo. He rolled his hand right around that, and he, he got a boatload of that. But that ball hit the pocket and still went yeah. back to the right. Sure did. So Barnes with a double up. And if he keeps going, he's cruising at a nice 279. Is that all? That's it. That's all he's got. Schaefer still has oh, 257 like out that. there. And that did the same thing that Schaefer's did. It held pocket. Does that make up for the eight pin? I, well, <laughs> it might. No. That ball, uh, that was he literally crossed yeah. like 18. He got that oh. way in. Oh, my. So. Somebody build up a shim somewhere. Yeah, they both had a couple breaks on that left lane. And was it Kelvin struck every time in that left lane? Yes. Right? So it's the right lane to give everybody fits. All right. Ryan with a possible 257, but he's got to go sheet. He needs, it. he needs to put two up on the board right now. A little hop, skip, and I'll throw it. 15 to 6 -ish. And left nine a solid pin. 9. That ball just came wow. so hard off the pattern. Well, I'll give Ryan 127 in the six with a spare conversion. And Barnes with an extra exit at 159. So what's that? 32 pins difference with four frames to go. Well, right now, Ryan, I think it, after, I should assume, but after he picks this up, which he did, he really needs to go off the sheet because Chris is looking pretty locked in right now. Well, and he gets to finish on that left lane, too. No, he finishes on the right lane. He finishes on the right lane, so.
So Ryan left it. What's it the uh, the three six his first shot in this lane. He struck the last two. Well, the first one he just didn't get right. Right. And he just didn't get the ball in good direction. Lane, right. That's still that was yeah. about a border. Right? That looked much better though. Yeah, they're playing that left lane a little bit tighter down lane. And all of a sudden now it's at the marker down lane instead of actually getting it out to like eight. It, yeah, because that was right over the marker. Range finder, tracer, whatever you want to call it. Dark spot. Dark spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I tell you what, talking to the players before these matches, though, they're using the arrows in those range finders a lot more because there's not a lot of targeting on the lane. No. You know, we actually, we turned off the middle, of the middle of the of the center here to get rid of the glare off the off the TVs because it was really wreaking havoc. Oh. You know, on, Chris on Barnes this, this looks like he just put it in cruise mode. He's got such end over end roll; it's just ridiculous. Just like you. It's all in the way. It just goes straight. <laughs> yeah, my ball doesn't come off the pattern, though. It just goes straight. I think Chris is a little fried to the fact that he wasn't the top seed. He lost that match, so it, now he's got to sure. he's got to run the ladder to get that yeah. title back. And that, that left lane definitely has uh, got a little bit of room down there. Yeah, so if I'm Parker, I don't want to let Chris finish on that left lane. No chance. Well, Parker is going to be next up. Yeah, that one hiccup for Ryan Schaefer just really – He's going to shoot 237, unfortunately, not have a chance to win and, and bowl a good game. Yeah, he bowled a solid game. A couple of shots that were a little bit inside of target. But, you know, the one almost held. The second one did. Well, the, the one was a footing issue. You know, if he doesn't have that, that changes the whole ball game. At least it makes it a lot closer. Oh, that was way inside a target down lane. But it really didn't make a whole lot of difference in anyway. No. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not much you can do here. Barnes has, you know, got 270 out there yet. He's in the 250s, right? He's in the 250 range and doesn't have to show up. So, again, he's going to get a, a, a free shot, two free shots on this right lane, which is, I mean, he's struck almost every time out here, but just that eight pin. But he can try a different ball. Well, we got Parker Bone coming on, and nobody's been on his side of the lane, so – other than him and the practice shots. So it all depends if he set his lane up good or bad. Ryan Schaefer, one final shot if he strikes 215. Chris Barnes if he strikes out 279. First couple games, not really all that close, but we're seeing Chris Barnes making some really good adjustments, some ball changes, some line changes. We've seen him make some hand adjustments, get a little more on it. And, uh, he's going to have all he can hope for now with another Hall of Famer here in the yep. semifinal match, Parker yeah. Bowen III, who's yeah. won three times this year. A Hall of Famer. Uh, so you've, try, got, you've uh, got more work to do now. Now you got to yeah. go line Parker up. Yeah, well, I, I don't know how much lining up you do yeah. with Parker. <laughs> he's kind of going to do what he's going to do anyway. Throw it there. And yeah, let's just go with that. Yeah. I was looking for, what am I looking for? I don't know. Something I can't find. Oh, the first match. Barnes over Calvin, 233 to 194. I could have told you that. Well, you didn't. It's right there. You didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 33 to 194. Ryan Schaefer, what, 213. Barnes, 250 to 270 is whatever. He's going to try a different ball here. Just uh, take a free run or something just to get a look at the shape and see what it's doing, how it reacts.
He threw that infinite physics on that right lane because that's a lane that's giving him a little problem anyway. That looked, that looked better than the last shot he threw at, yeah. at the end of the last So game, he's shooting so. 270 and basically 279 to 213. Barnes moves on. It's the HOFs against the HOFs. Yeah. And remember, they just bowled each other for a title a couple of weeks ago in Westland. Parker was a vicar in that one, and I guarantee you Chris remembers that. Oh, yeah, that was right after the show with the boys. All right. All right. So a little rematch from a couple of weeks ago. This is going to be in the semifinal match, not the final. That was Brandon and Ryan, wasn't it? Yeah. In that yeah. match? Yeah, it was. So, so far, the Barnes have been victorious in those battles, but Chris owned quite well today. What is 233, 278? 278, so, yeah. yeah He's averaging 250. Yeah, is that all? 255, Which not bad. Which is just a normal day for Parker. So we got a heck of a semifinal coming up next year. Tom, get down there and I'll see what I can do. Help that man out a little bit, and we'll continue on as James Campbell gets a couple practice shots as well as he'll come in for the final match. All right, everybody, make your picks. We got a, a rematch of the Hall of Famers here. Chris Barnes, Parker Bowen the third. Chris has a win this year in Aberdeen. Parker with a win in Mooresville, and then the major PBA 50 National in the Villages, and then the PBA 50 Cup just uh, just two weeks ago over in Westland, Michigan. Parker is leading player of the year. I was going to try to bring you up some of the player of the year stats and stuff, but now my laptop decides it just doesn't want to do what I need to do. So we love technology so much. Insert sarcasm here. All right, let's just go back and watch some of these practice shots. Tom Carter, the rep for Brunswick, so he's got James Campbell and Parker Bone. James doesn't mind circling the pattern a little bit either. So there's our pull. Who do you like in this Hall of Fame matchup? Parker or Chris? Make your picks. Root for them. And let's enjoy the semifinal match here from Spectrum Lanes in Wyoming, Michigan. Take a short break, come back with the semifinal match next.
So how was our poll? Who did our fans pick? Chris or Parker? Fifty-eight percent for Parker. All right. He's got his shots in. We'll uh, get things reset. Parker going for his 10th title. Yeah, that makes him eligible for the Hall of Fame. Oh, wait a minute. He's already in. He's, he's, <laughs> already, yeah, he's, he's already there. Has anybody gone in twice in the Hall of Fame? I don't know. Is there is, is a know. senior Hall of Fame? I don't know. I mean, there's yeah. a few other sports where, you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you go in multiple times. So oh. put him in again. Why not? And as, as we assume, there's no chance that Barnes is going to get to finish on that left lane. I mean, he, he bowled great on both lanes, but this lane is definitely, we yeah. saw, has a little more forgiveness down yeah. lane. Parker practiced with the co collision, and we kind of give it a little bit of surefish. Uh, 2,000? Yeah, how about 500? Oh. Yeah, we hit it lightly. You said a little bit of surface. Just a little bit. A lot of little. But I think he's going to throw the stealth, kind of give him a little more out and back shape. Okay. So. We'll see what happens. That went out. Yeah. And it came back. Yeah. To the talent of Parker Bone, he throws the other ball eight times, picks this up, throws it twice. <laughs> Probably only need to throw it once and he saw what he wanted to see. He's seen what he wanted to see. You talk about a guy that sees ball motion really well. See, that was still going a little bit left at that range point. It kind of hit eight and maybe out to seven and a half and then tip back. I think we talk about it every time we see Parker, but it's the great style of Parker Bone. He's just as smooth as it gets. Oh, how about some message? How what many was, pins did he throw over there? How many pins were in that rack? <laughs> because I think all nine of them just took out the seven. Oh, my Lord. Look at this. Look at that. There's, There's like three pins, pins at least. <laughs> Somebody didn't like the seven pin. I mean, <laughs> he just destroyed that wreck. You almost have to be scared to get up against that. Chris isn't scared. That was, that, was, that was in. Oh. That was in. That looked like it was going to go through the face, and thank you very much for another strike. Uh, clean up lane 48. It wow. turned the corner way too soon. Wow. That found so, a dry spot. So now the big question is when he gets back on that lane, on that right lane, is he going to make a move? Is he going to make or is, he, is he just going to try to do the same thing again? Uh, I, think he, I, I think you well, have to, don't you? I mean, well, and the way that ball peeled. It yeah, but, you know, that, if you move too much, then, up. then it burns up too much. Then what happens? Then you flat 10. Well, then he's got a, that ball change that, he, you know, he threw a couple times, right? That infinite physics he can jump to. Yeah, when he threw it in the fill shot on that right lane, it looked pretty good. He had a messenger come across that was doing cartwheels. Wow. Looked like a helicopter Man, going in. Just and I mean, misses just it. How's that possible? Any breaks today. Look at that. Look at that that thing spin. That head pin's just yeah. smoking across that pin deck. That had to be a short pin. That's him. <laughs> How's he miss that? Well, that is definitely frustrating for Chris Barnes because that was a quality shot, and that pin just missed the messenger.
I still don't know how that didn't hit it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, that was spinning around like crazy, Wait. bouncing around like a rubber ball. It, di it didn't look like it was that far in front of the 10 pin either. I never even touched it. Oh, that looks like it was in. But maybe not. I don't think he liked it that well. Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to see that shot again. Look at this pin action, though, again. Yeah, he was 15 to 10. What, what hit the 10 pin? And he <laughs> took the last one out to like 8, so he was right over the marker down lane. So they both got a break on that lane. When Parker, in the beginning, they got all their practice shots, and he came over here, and he had a ball, I think it had 240 on it. He was trying to carve a shot for himself. And hey, that's a lot of surface. Yeah, that's a lot of surface. Four-bagger for Barnes, or for <laughs> Parker, rather. Sorry about that. Meant. I knew what you meant. You know what yeah. I meant. Well. I was looking at Chris and looking at that. That's right. You're allowed two mistakes. One more and you're out here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it on purpose, though. <laughs> he did leave two pins on the deck that time, so Parker's got to clean it up a little bit. Tidy up there. If you win, do you care how many pins you leave on the deck? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That was inside, it, and it held. Oh, so I he's made he, an I adjustment. Think moved, yeah, yeah, I think he moved in to try to, to blend it out a little bit. Yeah, because that was more like 18. Yeah, 18, maybe almost 19, but yeah. he's not getting it out as far. So maybe that mistake that he had in the previous frame over there, he's like, hmm, maybe I got a little hold if I get in there. You got to learn from it. So, sometimes Aaron shots can tell you something. If you're watching ball motion. That ball just flat stopped on him. See the replay on that? It got to the spot and just straightened out. He must not got his hand around I that. I, I think he liked it by his reaction at first. Off his hand, didn't, I don't think he thought it was six count bad. That ball just never picked it, up off the spot. No, it went the wrong way. In qualifying, he said he had to get the, his hand around the ball a little bit more than he normally does. And I don't think he just got his hand around it. It's like it hit that spot and went dead forward. Well, so so now he's got push on the left lane, hook on the right lane, throwing the same ball in both lanes. What do you do now? Well, I mean, he carried both on the right, luckily. But I don't know if either shot was really what he was hoping for. I think he's got to make a maybe not a zone change, but just a little bit of an angle change. Two and one left, maybe. Just yep. Open up a little more, and or either go to that uh, infinite physics that he was throwing, something that could uh, give him a little more push through the front. Oh, that's in. That hit twelve down lane. That was way ugly. He got that in so far down lane that it split the markers down lane. That's just, an uncharacteristic just, shot. Humidity. Ball, maybe both players, balls just not quite come off their hand, right? Yeah. Possibly. Or. Well, Parker had that problem last week a little bit. And he couldn't get the ball off his hand the right way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the showman of oh, Parker. Oh, he's playing to the crowd. I don't know if the ball actually hit it, but it just it just the wind yeah, blew yeah, it over, right? It's all, yeah, hey, Parker it's over, being the showman. Matter. 
Good thing he hasn't resurfaced that spare ball at all. Fresh coat of paint on that <laughs> on that two pin. Wow. I I think he thought he missed that until that pin fell over. <laughs> so we got a twenty pin game. Parker's favor at at the moment after five frames. Oh, that was a big smack. Oh. He heard that, I know. Yeah, there was something a couple rooms behind us yeah, there that somebody dropped so, something. Yeah, so, it sounded like something fell. That was a little bit outside of shot, but he got away with it. Ten pins falling right there. Parker, 128 in the fifth, strike up. Chris backing off again. He's either hearing a whole lot of something or things just don't feel right. Yeah, I think it's just not quite feeling right. He did move in a little bit, looks like. Mm. Oh, he's holding. Oh, shot. That's the same shot. He's using that hold. That's kind of odd that, uh, well, I, I guess they kind of did it to themselves when they came over and did all that practice and burned it up. But at least there's still enough oil in the middle that the ball will hold. Did, uh, did James Campbell throw urethane at all in his practice shots? He did not. Uh, I mean, he, he throws it a lot. I mean, that might come into play here, right, with what we're seeing, possibly? Well, James likes to move left, so I know that, and he, he was throwing a pro ball in practice, and he really liked his look. But he's also, believe it or not, if he keeps his wrist broken down and goes through it, he's actually got a shot playing the out of bounds, moving right. Okay, that ball never left the one three pocket for Chris Barnes. That was straight off his hand. So Chris Barnes, one o nine in the fifth, a double up. Interesting. Did you catch that? No, I, I didn't hear what he said. He's, he said he's moved three right on the left lane from the last game oh. with, with his feet. Yeah. So he's, he's moved. Uh, he's moved one right on the right lane, but three on the left with his feet. So he just squared up the pattern. Yeah. But said he, has, he hasn't done this since the urethane days, moving that far right in the middle of a match. Wow. You, you do what you got to do. <laughs> right now he's down 19. That's, that's surprising that he moved back right because of all the burn and all the practice shots they took with all of those balls they sanded with a brick. You wouldn't think there would be, especially in the front part of the lane. Right. You wouldn't think there would be anything there. Oh, he liked that one. He oh, liked that yeah, one. Yeah, Parker walking that one out. He wanted every bit of that one. He was walking that out before the ball got off the end of the pattern. He knew this one. He aced it. Look. Yep, that was I got it. Yeah, look at and a <laughs> double fist pump too. You think he's not into it? No. <laughs> think he doesn't know what this match is? Yeah. I mean, player of the year implications. If Barn wins, he oh. sneaks up and might take the lead. Um, he, he knows what's going on. Parker, well, Parker's whole family has been bowling phenomenal this year. Yeah, he wants to keep those bragging rights. Well, he's got to try to stay ahead of the kids. 
Wow. Now the, the right lane actually looks easy now. Yeah, you can see it on that one. He definitely did kind of tighten things up a little bit. I mean, that's 18. That's, and yeah. he's just actually almost 10, 11 down mm -hmm. at the tracer down lane. Range finder. Range finder. <laughs> Mark. Black spot down there. Yeah, we got to come up with a common term for that one. But this one is a little bit different. It looks a little darker than the rest. Well, the gutters, I mean, the, the, all of those lines in the lane are I, either they're dark brown or black, and the gutters look black. So I shouldn't assume anything, but let's, the arrows and the markers are probably black. Well, it kind of goes with the theme of the walls and everything else in here. That everything's painted black in here. Yeah, I mentioned on our main broadcast this week, from the last time I was here a couple of years ago, they've done amazing work in this place. Oh, my God. Between I can't the even boutique and, and, I mean, the restaurant. My I, goodness. I can't even fathom how much money they spent yeah, on this there place. Was, there was a few commas. Yeah. A few, a few commas in, in that At one. least. Oh, are yeah, you well, kidding see, me? That almost wow. looked like he tried to shim it up like the right lane. That was tighter because that was at 11 yeah, down lane. Yeah, a little tighter, but not – I mean, that's just another just horrible carry, horrible break there. One of those Not, could fall. Yeah, leaving a 4-10 in the ninth. I Spare is makeable, but realistically he gets one. So it gives him 195 in the ninth, possible 225. Parker's in the driver's seat. And he didn't get either well, one I mean, of you them. you got to go for it. That he has to. I mean, yeah, one, one is irrelevant. It's not going to matter. He might as well try to make it. So 183, 223 possible. Well, for Chris, if he strikes out, Parker looking at 278. Yeah, there's, there's. Yeah. It, yeah. There's Instead of looking at the monitor here, happen. I'm looking at the score, and there's that big balloon right in front of the score. Right there. Yeah, they look like uh, we don't have a shot of those, but they look like the, those Chinese lanterns. Yeah, that's what they massive. look like. Great looking here, though. Nice ambiance. Oh, fancy <laughs> words. I wrote uh -oh. that one down earlier. He swung that to La La Land, and I don't even know how that struck. It's Hall of Fame carry. Hall of Fame something. It's Holy Hall cow. Hall of Fame carry right there. Well, guess what? Parker's going to be bowling for title number four. four, and he's going to increase that lead for player of the year. And that gives him title number 10 if he wins. I don't know what I'm going to talk about, though. I've interviewed him three times this year. Right? What else we got to talk about? <laughs> So, how's one one more Winfield? Yeah, but right. we got James Campbell coming up, looking for his first. So he's hungry. He trips the three pin forward twice. You don't want to don't want to waste those yet. You better save one or two of those for this next match because I got to believe that uh, James is going to give him one heck of a challenge here. So uh, Chris Barnes finishing just, third yeah. in tonight's. But let's look at that for five. Barnes. The, the fifth frame, the six count. I really think he liked it. It didn't look that bad. And then this last shot we saw, just a 410, just a brutal break there on that carry. And let's not forget about that that that, oh. that eight pin or nine pin earlier. You know, right. eight pin. I mean, I mean, I mean this, the, this the is six count he body. thought he had, and I don't think he thought he threw the one in the ninth all that bad. No, I mean, I mean he missed a little bit, but not not 410. So I mean, this game could have really gone either way pretty quick. That just shows you how tough the sport of bowling can be. And, so uh, Parker, you've got to get some breaks and have things go your way. We saw Parker get a couple of breaks. It was his turn again, and he's going to bowl for another title here in the 2022 season. Well, that just gets him. Now he's only five behind Walter Ray for the number of senior titles. But if he wins, yeah. Right? Yeah, ten, if he uh, wins. Ten, Walter's at 15. Walter's got 15. Well, he won't be able to get it this year. There's only two more tournaments left. Yes, no, he won't, he won't <laughs> so, get it this year. So he could get to 12. He could, yeah. <laughs> at the rate he's going, he could get to 12. So Parker, 266 to Chris Barnes, 213. <sighs> I mean, that's what? 213 for Barnes, but that was a lot better ball game than that. We saw him make some moves. We saw him throw some great shots. Uh, yeah. just, just didn't go his way again. Parker's got the best of him a couple times now, but Chris will be back. Oh, Chris is going to be back. There's no, doubt, there's no doubt. He's had a great season. He's making shows, seems like, every week. Uh, but we're going to have a first-timer here. Yeah, James Campbell coming on from Clearwater, Florida. He gets 10 shots, and I'm going to go out there and see what he's going to do, and I'll let you know what's going to happen. All right, let's get him lined up. Should be a great championship match coming up. Let's do another poll. 
Who do you like for the win here? Parker Bowen the third for title number four on the year or ten overall or James Campbell to get his first win ever on the PBA 50 tour. So Campbell gets eight shots total. He can divvy him up however he wants. Seven and one, six and two, five and three, four and four, eight and zero. It doesn't matter. He gets eight shots in a championship pair. And you see Parker, he can just go over there and stay loose. That's all this is. He's not trying balls or lanes. He's just throwing a shot or two just to keep loose over there. I do know talking to James throughout the season and even and even this week that he, he likes the burn a little bit, which is kind of where we're at now with all the play on this pair in this uh, championship match. But James is bowling for his first title. Bowling for the first title here, Larry. Talked to him during the break here a little bit ago. He's not feeling too nervous, feeling good. Got his couple shots there during that last little break and, uh, you know, feeling confident. Why not? Number one seed coming in. Just got to win one. And I'll tell you what, if he gets the W here, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty emotional, I'm sure. So vote in the poll. Take your pick. We'll be back with the championship match here in just a couple minutes live from Spectrum Lanes here in Wyoming, Michigan. A little bonus giveaway here before the championship match. Submit your entry. See what you can win.
Looks like that's the fifth shot for James Campbell. Maybe. Oh, he wasn't going lane to lane. Just looking at the scores there. They'll have to take those off. He's just trying to get things lined out. Jay Parks, Starbucks. Who needs coffee? Another long week of great competition. We've seen some fantastic games, some great matches, and we're down to the final right here. Match one, Chris Barnes defeated Mike Calvin, 233, 194. Barnes, 278 to 213 over Ryan Schaefer. Parker Bowen, the third, 266, 213 over Chris Barnes in the semifinal match. And now we've got James Campbell out of Clearwater, Florida, taking on Parker Bowen, the third. Campbell looking for his first title. Bowen looking for his fourth of the year and tenth of his career here on the PBA 50 tour. And we got Tom Carter back. He's got a lot going on, Tom. Yeah. Hope I, you're getting I, some, some <laughs> overtime pay here today. Well, that'd be nice, but I don't think so. <laughs> no. But right, well. that's okay. Parker going to stick with the stealth. He was thinking about changing surface, but I mean, he, he bowled such a good game. How do you how do you mess with what's working, right? Yeah, and, he's, and he created some room, and he, and he had pretty good carry. So, yeah, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And amazingly, James Campbell coming up, he's going to be throwing an Evo Pearl. Uh, it's kind of his go-to ball. And he actually has the right lane the same as the left. But he's he's throwing it totally different than, obviously, the rest did of the you, guys. Did you ask him twice? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? And, and he's, he's in his practice shots, his 10 shots, he looked extremely comfortable. Yeah, I, t I talked to him before that semifinal match. He said, he's feeling good, relaxed, threw a couple good shots there. And Got a little warm up on the pair, and hey, why not? Let it go. I just told him have fun. Uh, he didn't. He didn't get he didn't, that to the didn't spot. Get that one out. Yeah, that hooked in front of the range finder. He's got. If he, <laughs> we told him I about mean, the right lane. It's gonna be nerves, though, right? It's bit. got. It's got to be nerves. He's got to get it out there. When he got out around that range finder, and he got it literally, he could get it out to six, and just it sucked back to the hole. But now you're bowling for the title. Practice is obviously different. <laughs> Yeah, you don't win in practice. You know, some of us do win a lot in practice. It seems like you don't win the title in practice. So. All right. Oh. All right. It, Make it was fair. It, 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 at first, I thought he might have missed that right, but the ball came back. I think one of these weeks, we just got to put a heart monitor on you sitting back here watching your players because you're getting a little yeah. antsy. Well, I, I do, <laughs> don't I? I well, you know, I, yeah, I get a little excited. Like, you thought he missed that. Come well, on. You know, come on. I start coming out of my seat and stuff. Never a doubt. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> well, you know, I can't help it. Boy, it took a lot of time. This to me is a yeah. telltale shot. If he can get this hey. one on the spot and strike, he's going to relax. There he goes. That's much better. <laughs> what, what was that, Duke? Yeah. All right, what's, there must be some history there, huh? Hey, there's there's got to be. <laughs> well, he's from Clearwater, right? Yeah, that's that's it. They're both from Clearwater. It, you think that's it? Oh, no, Claremont. Duke's from Claremont. Yeah. Close enough. They're both from Florida. <laughs> I don't know. There's no similarities in the game, well, but where did all that come from? There must be there must be some history. They're just trying to connect the dots and find out what uh, where that chant comes from. We didn't get the memo. Yeah, 
Well, it's right behind me, so maybe I can find out what it is. Parker slapping out the five. Wow. Uh, I don't Can you miss? I mean, it doesn't matter when he misses. He's still carrying it. Right. I mean, he's just throwing shrapnel everywhere. You look at that long swing of his, gets the ball down the lane. Head pin goes to the side and basically takes out the Everything. six and yeah. the five. Everything. That keeps that arm swing loose when you're getting shots like that to knock them all down. S soup. Campbell Soup. All right. I got it now. Really? It sounded like Duke with the headset on. Uh oh. That was way too far out. What and were you worried about? I, what the, I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> did, did don't him, even ask. Did it matter? <laughs> like, Parker, what are you looking yeah, at? Look at uh, down there. Yeah, yeah the 510, and they both fell down. Wow. Hey, you know what? When it's going your way, just keep doing it, right? Well, you don't really have a choice, do you? Well, I guess you do have a choice. I, think I want one of those balls now if it carries that good. Sign me up. James is another bowler out here on tour that literally puts a lot of revs on the ball, and it looks very effortlessly. He just, like, follows through, but has a bunch on the ball. Leaves the two-pin. He's still not getting it to the hook spot that he was. It's only the third frame. He's but got. I, I, I like that he's still just let it go. He's staying loose. He's not grabbing it, right? And he got that first shot jitters out of the way, threw a good shot in the second frame, and, and again, he's just, you know, he doesn't look tight at all, which is which is a plus. Well, I, th I think it might be the heart rate inside, the things that we don't see. Uh-oh. A little bit of a – ooh. That was nice footwork. <laughs> yeah, we're getting that heart monitor next week for you. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> You're all over the place. Okay, I won't say nothing the rest of the time. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here. He's not nervous, folks. He's not nervous. <laughs> he just squeezed the life out of my leg there on that last one. <laughs> James takes a considerable yeah. deliberate. amount of time deliberate on the sure. approach. And unfortunately, yeah. sometimes I That's think you study long, you study wrong, no. and too much time on the approach. That's uh, something I, I was taught years ago. The longer you stand there, the more apt the ball is to be left to target. It, you know I mean, because you're, you're, you're holding a 15-pound bowling ball. Right. Your arm's going to get tired. That's just the way it goes. He, he just, you know... We all want to make those great shots and, and do the right thing, but I just think sometimes the longer you, you think about it, you just put added pressure to yourself. Get up there, get set, and, and kind of go on. I, I shouldn't talk here lately. I've been taking a little bit longer, and I think it – well, yesterday it didn't do me any good well, whatsoever. You're, you're, just, you're older. You're just taking a little nap up there, right? Well, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> i got to have a little siesta every now and then. Yeah, yeah. sometimes it's on the approach. That's it. Hopefully he realizes he's got four frames in. He's just got to get up there, and just like he is practicing. He wasn't taking that much time when he was throwing in, in practice. Just get up there, give it well, a toss. But also, let's, let's, let's be honest here. How, how, I mean, how long can Parker keep carrying some of these shots? I mean, he, look, look, he's not making really good shots, but he's fair on a way to knock them all down. But sooner or later, it's got to That's stop, in. right? Maybe not. That was in it from where he just threw the last one. That was in. That was about 11 down lane. But now you got your bowling Hall of Famer for your first title. Right now you're on a spare string, and the guy you're bowling is on a strike string. Easy. Just start striking. And hope yeah. he gives you an opportunity it, to get in the match. Exactly. I mean, everybody's human. They, they make mistakes, and you got to hope that uh, – he has kind of a little mental lapse and, and it opens the door. Because otherwise it keeps going like this. James, that is three shots in a row.
And when you've got it going on, you've got it going on. That eight pin was standing there, and we got something off the wall to take it out. Uh, I, I don't know how you can beat this at this point. Yeah. I mean, uh, what, there's not well, much you can do. Well, Parker swings just got to be just getting looser and looser because when when you get a free swing and things are going your way, the ball, the pins seem to know it. They just they're going to fall all over the place. He just threw the front five at James Campbell. James, <laughs> he's really got to start putting some oomph into this to get to that break point. Otherwise, changes lines, change balls. He's got to do something. There you go. Yeah. What do you just tin cup them, change the balls, change lines, tighter left, shoot tighter, put your head on backwards, That's it. move I mean, the change. I tried to cover everything in right that pocket, statement. Left pocket, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that one will help him a little bit. That was a good shot. Quality shot right there. Well, he got it to the spot he was practicing at. And the very first shot, he only got it to like 12 down the lane. That was not going to work. And that replay, James just posted and froze the yeah. shot. And that's when he's bowling great. When he, he's got great timing. He gets the line, he posts the shot like that. He strikes a ton. Get there. That's inside. You see, he didn't post that shot as well as the last one. And, and yeah. I don't remember seeing James out here in the past on the tour. You know, I've been off for a little bit. But come back, I remember the first time I saw him this year, I'm thinking, man, that guy throws it really good. Yeah, he, he um, You know, bowled in the south region. Um, you know, so I, did, I wasn't around seeing him. But I've heard he's bowled a ton through the years. But now here on the PBA 50 tour, I, he's bowled with a lot of big names down in Florida, and he's well known down there. His son throws it like, oh my God, he, he a baseball he's player. Too? He's a baseball player, and he puts a boatload on it when he's bowling. But James coming back, to talk to his wife. He's got to he's got to settle down. But if Parker throws the next two, it's kind of a Mood point again. Oh, and he gives her a lot of credit for helping with his game all the time, keeping him oh, calm, yeah. helping him make, yeah. you know, just somebody yeah. to talk to, right? The right. If you, if you see any of his Facebook posts, yeah. he's always crediting his wife for the, getting him through any tough situation and still making the cut. Hey, they're part of our motorhome group. Yeah. They've, uh, they, they've transcended into living in the parking lot. Ooh. All right. So it seemed like it was going to have to come to an end at some point. You can't carry all the shots all the time. No. That, now, that was way out there, and he threw that a fast. Way fast. So now we're looking at what, a 266 possible? Unless he picks this up, it would be 277. Somewhere in that nature. Hey, he gets two. So Parker now has 145 in the sixth. Yeah, so striker Campbell 265. Would give him 117. So it's at 28 pins. If he, he's strike. got 237 if he can go off the sheet. Yeah. Well, there was that door that we were talking about that maybe opened up a little bit. Uh, it's you know, it's open. You know, a little, little sunshine blowing through there. You know, we can see a little little light inside that door jam, but not not a whole lot just yet. Championship match here, PBA 50 Spectrum Cup, Parker Bone, James. And Campbell. another swisher. So not like the previous match when they were kind of like ten in a the pit. These are all half pockets. But, you know, I mean, we've seen this for years, though, right? When Parker might not have the berries or have a great shot, he still figures out a way to knock them all down, it, which other players just yeah. don't have that at times. No, he, he's he got an instinct that, that that's God-given. You, you just – I don't think you can teach what he does instinctively as far as moves, speed, adjustments. James moved in on there. that one. Definitely has a, a crew rooting for him here. Yeah, well, that's. I think that's all the motorhome crew right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a, a party on the motorhomes tonight. If yeah, James well, can sneak out a win there, here. There, there's three of them back there. 
I brought my lawn chair this week, too. I was going to come back and visit you all. But, but you didn't? I didn't. You, Next week. Well, you got Anderson? Next week. You going to be in Anderson? No. Jackson. Jackson. Okay. And Columbus? Absolutely. Oh. We got a gazebo. We got a, a paddock outside in Columbus. Perfect. <laughs> Save me a spot. James Campbell wants any hope of winning this one. He's got a strike right here. And left That's inside a target. Inside all That's way. runaway left and way, way that left. is almost game set match, folks, right there. Possible two seventeen now if he goes off the sheet. Yeah, Parker's facing two twenties. And he's got a three nine, which is not the easiest pickup since the lanes hook so much. If he swings it too far, there's the out-of-bounds. It might not hook. And if he don't get it there, it could hook in front of it. I think this might be harder than trying to strike, picking this thing up. No problem. Easily. <laughs> Parker is so close to winning his 10th PBA 50 title. In fourth this year. And four this year. What a great season. He's a, we had that one year where Pete won five in a row and was on the show bowling for the title for the sixth one. That was an incredible year. That was about four or five years back, I think. It was. I remember he took off, actually, the week in, at Fountain Valley after having that string, and they came back and just kept winning. Right over 10 down lane, and that was money right there. Yep. That was traditional mind. Parker Bowen. All those other shots didn't matter. When he knows he's got to throw it to make it happen and wrap up the title, there it was. So what really needs to happen now with Parker, he just needs some kind of mark in the next two frames to wrap this up. What an incredible season he's having. Unbelievable. Oh, and guess what? He's 60 next year. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. It's that day. Well, it's not me. Oh, All right. <laughs> there it is. There's Another a winner. One. Another one. Parker Bowen with his 10th PBA 50 title. And I don't think we have to worry about it on the 60 side. He's not going to get a 60 check. Maybe when he's 80. <laughs> right. You know, I don't yeah. think those eight super senior checks are ever going to come yeah, into play. He's, he's not outside the advantage range very often. And just padding those stats, Phyllis, as you mentioned, their player of the year, increasing that lead. Yeah, and I tell you what, I mentioned it earlier jokingly, but I, I mean, if I'm the Bone family, I'm looking for a house in Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to move to Michigan. <laughs> four, it seems to four, be the place. Four titles in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, Leslie's family does have a bowling center here still, right? Oh, wow, down yeah. south, southern Michigan, so. James Campbell is probably going to pure these last three shots because there's no pressure left. Just get up and throw it. But, you know, he got to bowl for the title. That's something, even though he didn't win, a lot of people never even get to this point to bowl for a title. But as well as James throws it, he will be on a show again. Oh, a absolutely. Again, I mean, you know, Parker <clears throat> just got up there and willed the pins over those first you know, three, four, five shots, and then when he needed it, he really dialed things in and right a couple now, good shots there. But James, like you said, just relax, throw a couple good shots. Just like that. Learn from it, and next time you're in this position, you're ready to go. Right now, the only way somebody else wins the title on the PBA 50 Tour is if Parker doesn't show up. Yeah, maybe someone <laughs> wants to reprogram a GPS on how to get to Anderson in his car and say, oh, sorry, what am I doing in Louisville? Well, he missed the turns. <laughs> that's, that's just too bad. Sorry about your luck. Well, the way he's bowling, he can miss the first round and still make the cut. <laughs> ah, see, now he's getting those breaks. <laughs> yeah, you know. Again, he's just got to be happy, right? I mean, you, you, number one seed, you got a chance to bowl for the title. You're bowling against a Hall of Famer, a guy who's won three times now four this year, ten times overall on the 50 tour, and how many times on a regular tour? 30 some times yeah, on a regular it's, tour. It's not like you lost yeah. to to just just any bowler out there. No. Um, and, and you know, look, it was Parker's day. We saw him get some good carry against Chris. 
in some really good carry here against Parker. And, you know, well, it's, and that's bowling. Uh, we've said it 100 times, but this whole season, Parker is bowling incredible. I mean, you can't take it away from him. He's on a roll. You know, yeah, and I'm sure when you recap this a little bit with James, you know, he knows he threw a couple of errant shots, and they, and they really cost him. You know, and you know, you make a bad shot, and then you try to adjust off a bad shot, and you make another not so good shot, and I mean, two sixteen is not a bad game, clean, made some tough spares, but he knows he made a couple of bad shots. But so, and that was just nerves, bowling, sure. bowling for yeah, your absolutely. first. Yeah. 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 He's just pure Parker right there. So Parker Bone 266 against Chris Barnes, and he can shoot 265 here this game. Good luck beating that, right? Yeah. When you're throwing it as good as he's throwing it, I, you better have all your ducks in a row, the stars aligned, and everything else. He just tried to spun out another five. It was just, I just think he could kick it down there right now and strike. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah, I'd like to see him just throw on backwards with his heel and it, it hey, just go hey, dead flush. Trick so, shot, trick shot. <laughs> yeah, five pins would take out the seven like we saw yeah. earlier. One last shot, and he just uh, – Well, it's a turn to go out there metric. What a ball game. 266, 265 in the semis and the finals for Parker Bowen. Unbelievable. Yeah. That, what an incredible show that he's been putting on this season. Yeah, that's My right. God, the bone family. you talk about the bone zone. Go down and have a talk with this young man again here a little bit. Craig Elliott going to go out and do a little bit of an interview, find out what Parker's thinking, <clears throat> what his secret is to win four titles in one season. His 10th career PBA 50 title. One closer to Walter A. Williams that has 15 PBA 50 titles. Walter has the record. Be beat John Handegard that held the record for 14. As soon as we get through with the presentation with Mike Eaton Jr., uh, the money and the trophy. M Craig is going to go out and give us a a one on one. Let them get a couple photos here with the uh, with the trophy first. We got the cameras ready. 
Another great turner for James Campbell. Congratulations, James. And then a shout out again to Spectre Mullane's great hosts. The tours have all come here a lot through the years, ready to come back again for years to come. How about another round of applause for the Eaton family? Great hosts, as always, here for PBA events. Parker, I think they covered most of the questions I was going to ask. I, th I think we might know a couple of real estate agents if you're looking to move to Michigan because the, the way you guys have bowled here the last couple of weeks is phenomenal. I mean, what can you say about that? It's just, uh, it, it's unimaginable. You, you know, when we came out here about a month ago to Michigan, uh, I'll say it from my heart. I was hopeful that my kids would perform decent in each one of their divisions that they bowled here in junior gold. When you look at four or 5,000 competitors around the country, and then in between that, I was able to slip to the other side and, of the state and catch a, a title and came back and rooted on my children and, and watched the success that they had. And then all of a sudden now uh, I find myself coming back to Grand Rapids once again. Imagine that. And here I am holding the check and trophy. And uh, folks, I can't tell you, oh my God, I'm speechless right now. As beautiful as this facility is in here, it's one of a kind, it's a first class atmosphere. And I'm telling you, the Eaton family, they do the same thing in regards to all of the PBA players that walk through their doors. What they're offering you, they offer to us. Thank God for them and thank God for all of you. Congratulations again, Parker. Your fourth title this year, open up the points lead for player of the year, your 10th title overall on the PBA 50 tour. And we were talking Tom Carter and I in the booth during his last couple matches. He shot 266, 265. It didn't look like you had the greatest line out there, but you figured out a way to get done and get the ball to go through the bins and carry. What was your secret today? Well, I mean, I was using the collision most of the event on and off, but when I came over here, I decided to go to the track stealth because it looked like it had a little bit more teeth and it enabled me to get deeper on the lane, but yet it still seemed like it respected the lane and did everything I needed it to do. So, uh, you know, I watched a young man, Carter Street, bowl with that ball in junior gold, and he shot 300, and I said, well, you know, maybe I'll give it a chance today. And my God, it doesn't hook as much for me as it does for him, but uh, I'll, the success tells the story. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations again, Parker, and we'll see you in a couple days in Anderson. We will. One more thing I want to do, folks. I'm going to tell you right now, there's this little company, but giant company up the street. It's called Brunswick, and without them, I'm going to tell you, I don't think I'd be standing here right now. So the success that I'm having out here is to all the employees and all the staff, Jeff and Tom, you guys are certainly included in this because they stand behind us each and every week. So thanks a lot to Brunswick, but thanks a lot to all the staff and all the fans here at Spectrum Lanes. Parker Ball in the third. And there we have the wrap-up uh, with Craig Elliott and the interview with Parker Bone. Craig will be just in a second back in the booth, and we will wrap this up, and we will be down at Anderson, Indiana at Championship Lanes, Dave Small's place. The action there starts Saturday with a practice in Pro-Am. Tournament starts on Sunday. Yeah, more PBA 50 action on Bowl TV, PWB action on TV. we still got another pretty busy month. Yes. Of coverage here on, on multiple tours. And then after that, collegiate action kicks off. So plenty of bowling yet to come on Bowl TV. Tell your friends, tell your family, get more subscribers out there. Great uh, competition again tonight. Tom Carter, thank you again for sitting yeah. in. There's uh, some good stuff. Yeah. I mean, the matches weren't necessarily close, but we saw some pretty interesting shot making, some yeah. good adjustments. And, and the, Well, again, the adjustments, that was the key. The adjustments that were made on this show tonight to keep – uh, the ball in play, and, and to get the pins to dance around was incredible. But Parker just, I don't know, I mean, it's tough to ask him. To, he just finds a way to knock the pins down. He did, I mean, look, we sat here. He didn't make great shots. No. And Very you, few good you, shots, you but can go back the on pins this, still fall. This video, and you're going to see the first game against Chris, the ball motion pretty much looked the same, but the pin action was totally different compared to yeah. the second match. 
Unbelievable. Great adjustments, great bowling again. And we're going to get ready to pack things up here from Spectrum Lanes again. A shout-out to the Eaton family. They've hosted uh, multiple events here through the years, and we appreciate all of that. So and just a big shout-out and thank you to the USBC, USBC Board of Directors, BPAA, and the BPAA Board of Directors. The staff, of course, John Weber, Linda Carter, the guys on the truck, player service is always doing a great job of keeping things moving here. Eric Pearson, our lane man, and how about that? Shot there. There you of go. Our champion yet again. And for our ball TV crew, Tom Carter, Brian Kane, everybody down in Dallas, Mike Flanning will be back in a few days for the Anderson stop. We appreciate all of you. And remember, on Bowl yeah. TV, bowling lives here. There you go.